Hello and welcome to Holcomb Farming Company. My name is James Beamish and I'm the farm manager for the farming company. Um, usually one of the highlights of our farming year is opening our gates up and welcoming you all onto Open Farm Sunday. Unfortunately this year we can't welcome you here, so what we've decided to do is bring Open Farm Sunday to you. Hello, I'm Des. I'm responsible for all the uh, prime cultivations on the farm. With this little piece of equipment here, um, New Holland T9, 560 horsepower, with a 7 meter opus, uh, does all the prime cultivations. Good morning, my name is John. I manage the livestock for the estate, for Holcomb Estate. We're out here on the nature reserve on our summer grazing. We, on the estate we currently have 850 head of cattle. Uh, this is a group of cows and calves within here. So these calves, the calves you can see, were born March, April. So they're probably eight, ten weeks old, these calves. They're out here, they came out here probably a month of age and then they will stay out here now until November. They uh, the breeding wise, so this cow behind us now is a Hereford cross, we've got some South Devon cross, we've got Simmental cross and the calves are a mixture as well. They are not little calf pairs of limousine, there's a semi cross, there's another Simmental cross there. But, uh, there's a bull back in with these, so these a cow is pregnant for nine months. She has a three month, she will uh, suckle a calf for nine months and she will have a three month rest period and calf again. So then the process starts again. So this time next year, the identical cows will be down here with different calves. Uh, these calves are then, so they will be weaned at nine months of age. They will then winter inside, be back out here next year for grazing. The females, the heifers will be kept for replacement, coming to the herd. The, the male cows will be patterned and finished uh, for the beef. Hi, my name is Jonathan uh, Holt. I am one of the wardens here at Holcomb Nature Reserve. Behind us is some of the 800 head of cattle we have on the Nature Reserve. They arrive around about early spring and they uh, graze throughout the entire site. Now, the reason we have cattle on the grazing marsh behind us is that they maintain a sward height, so the sward is the length of the grass. This is uh, for our breeding waders, uh, so we have lapwing, avocet, red shank and uh, oyster catchers that breed here. We're sorting sheep out today at Holcomb on this day. So we have got a variety of breeds here. Uh, Jenny's breeds. We've got a few mules in here, the mules are shearling. We uh, ram for the first time in the yard. Then we've also got some lambs born this year. These lambs were born mid-April. So they're about 10 weeks old, 8 to 10 weeks old now. Yeah, here we have um, some grey partridge chicks that are around a couple of days old. They're with their surrogate mother. Uh, she's had those, she's sat on those for 24 days uh, until the hatch is complete. And she will look after those for the next eight weeks. Uh, we will move them out into bigger pens, give them more space. Uh, the pen she's in at the moment is a nursery pen and that just keeps a, a nice temperature keeps her away from the elements and gives her a little bit of a helping hand. Uh, the the grey partridge or English partridge as you can see by the video is, is a tiny little chick um, very weather dependent and also very insect life dependent 
it needs good habitat to produce insect life so it doesn't have to travel far to forage for food uh, and whilst they're, they're in the wild they're quite a resilient bird and they can stand a surprising amount of weather they really don't want at this time of the year long cold periods of rain um, and wind because they are very susceptible to chilling so being under the surrogate mother of the broody hen uh, what it does it actually teaches the the nature of things to the partridge chicks it teaches them how to feed how to drink what to look for looking for insects that are naturally found and it gives them a good start to be put back into the wild when they're about eight weeks old we will go out and we will find barren pears barren pears being pairs of grey partridge that unfortunately have lost their young and we will replace them with a foster family and because of the maternal instincts of the grey partridge they will take over and they will look after them as their own and they will teach them the ways of the wild and we continue the cycle here we have some pheasant chicks uh, they're uh, a couple of weeks old um, just, just coming up to th towards three weeks old now these pheasant chicks were a nest that had been abandoned uh, in the wild um, they were found by Martin, one of the keepers. Um, he found these eggs. Uh, they were cold. They'd been abandoned. Now that could have been a stray dog off the lead or um, some activity that's caused the hen to abandon. Uh, so they got put under a broody hen and she sat on those and hatched them after 24 days. Again, we produced the, the pheasant chick. Hello. Welcome to the walled garden um, and welcome to the vegetable section of the walled garden. I'm Kirsty, um, I'm responsible for growing the veg in here plus many other jobs in the walled garden generally. Um, this year we've uh, tried to go to town a bit in here. Um, ideally we were hoping to fill all the beds. Uh, we're slowly getting there. Um, of course the season's still quite young but like the farms the weather's not really with us in the way we'd like so a few crops have been struggling a bit. Um, what we have quite nearby at the moment which is quite interesting is this year uh, I was determined to put some pollination strips in so we've had some of those we've got psyllium for the main in here and some legumes to add some nitrogen or do the nitrogen fixing. Beyond that there's a line of quinoa, not doing great this side, but doing better on the other side. Um, then the next row after that, on the, this side, we've got some chickpeas. Uh, very much the fave food at the moment, hummus galore. Um, and I thought it might be really interesting for the public to see what a chickpea plant actually looked like. And here they are. Uh, they're not in flower yet, um, but they're doing really well. I think they like the dry hot spring, surprise, surprise. Um, beyond those, we've got the broad beans, which have been fantastic. And the reason they've been so good, uh, I think we can blame the nice wet winter we've had. And then as we proceed up the garden, we've gone for the root vegetables. Uh, we've got a lot of beetroot, carrot, parsnips. We've also got some leafy things, the chards, the spinaches. Good afternoon, I'm Simon. I work on the farm, but I do all the conservation and environmental stuff on the estate due to the HLS plots. Um, currently today, we're standing in a HE10 margin with the oxide daisies out in flower. Um, I'm preparing ground ready for the wild bird covers which helps the keepers and all the natural wildlife on the estate. Um, we have roughly about 70 hectares of that on the whole estate. We also have nectar flower mixes for the birds and the bees, um, which is probably in excess of about 20 hectares. Um, all sorts on the estate for the environment, for the wildlife. Um, as you can see, it's a beautiful estate to work in. Um, and it's just flat out all the time, giving nature what it needs back and making everywhere lovely, really. So hi, I'm Harry. Uh, I'm the Potato Enterprise Manager on the Holcomb Estate. Today we're stood in the Holcomb Park um, in a field called Little Pump Piece. Um, there's a field of potatoes behind me. 
that was planted in the last few days in March. Um, the variety is a main crop variety called Georgina. Um, that will be destined for Tesco supermarkets under the Tesco finest brand. Um, and as you can see today, we're busy irrigating. In North Norfolk, we haven't had any rain for up to six weeks now, so the ground is very dry um, and potatoes use a lot of water in order. 